Hello and welcome to the Songbook Sessions, edition 17. My name's Stuart Earle and I'm a singer-songwriter and I live in Stroud in Gloucestershire. Everyone that I speak to is suffering from lockdown fatigue in one way or another, so I hope that um, it's going to sort itself out and we can all cheer up and get on with life and Christmas and blah de blah um, So, uh, it's forecast snow on Friday. That'll be a laugh, won't it? Um, but just as a reminder, that um, Christmas is on its way. So, uh, of course, we all started Christmas um, about a month ago in the Earl household, and that um, Emma has already started watching Christmas movies, including Elf, the family favourite. So, I don't know how many times I'll have to watch it over the Christmas season. Um, but if you want a Christmas film recommendation, then uh, I would suggest uh, my recommendation is Bad Santa. Great film. Okay, um, yeah, super good news. Uh, I got a f an email uh, this last week from my friend um, Andy Collis in Australia. I was in a band at art college in Mansfield with Andy. Uh, he was uh, he was a great mate. Um, back then in uh, 1782 and um, he eventually emigrated to uh, Eastern Australia where he uh, has been teaching um, fine art in a university there. So um, the good news is that he's done a couple of songs for us and um, here's one, in fact here's one, what I wrote, and he's done a version of Waiting for the heartache. But I hear this. Hello, Stuart Earl. This little message comes to you all the way from Sydney, Australia. Just north of Sydney, actually. It's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, I enjoyed listening to your last album and I've been watching your uh, video blogs or whatever you call them. And so I'm happy to uh, contribute a couple of songs, if you don't mind. And uh, I thought I'd do one of your songs in my own way. I hope you don't mind if I've taken a few liberties with the uh, chords and I've even made the lyrics a little bit more personal to me rather than just doing a straight copy. Um, so anyway, here we go. And it's called uh, Waiting for the Heartache by Stuart Earle. Here we go. <laughs> Some folks take the road that never ends and Some folks take it just to ride the band I just don't know when to stop Or how to make amends I'm waiting for the heartache to begin Looking for love that never dies when I met you, I could see it in your eyes I just can't believe my luck When will it all cave in? I'm waiting for the heartache to begin Waiting for the heartache Waiting for the heartache Waiting for the heartache to begin Some folks like to scream and shout Maybe they should sing I'm waiting for 
the heartache to begin Some folks always seem to lose While others always win I'm waiting for the heartache to begin Waiting for the heartache Waiting for the heartache I'm waiting for the heartache to begin well, I can see that old sun is shining, smiling all around He's coming around the corner while I'm heading out of town He's always trying to catch me out while my guard is down But I'm waiting for the heartache to begin Waiting for the heartache Waiting for the heartache I'm waiting for the heartache to begin Some folks let their feelings out But I just keep mine in Some folks have it all worked out But I'm still wondering I'm waiting for the heartache to begin For the heartache to begin Thank you very much Thanks Andy, nice one I like that, chord changes I could never get, <laughs> I could never do that uh, He's a good player um, So um, Way back when we started The songbook sessions uh, One of my first guests was Steve Frebrash of The Achievers. And uh, I had a little catch-up session with Steve last week um, to find out what they've been up to and what's going on. And um, just in case you've forgotten what The Achievers sound like, here they are. <laughs>
Hello, Steve. How you doing? All right. I'm okay, mate. Yeah, good. Nice to see you. Yeah. yeah no, you are yeah. just down the road that way. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. When, when did we get together for a chat last? It was, uh, it right... was April, I believe. Was it? Was it? I mm. remember it being sunny and I was sitting in the garden with a cider. You were you were well on the way to a few ciders there, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> glorious days. Yeah. <laughs> so, how's, um, how's things? Because you've become a useful man, haven't you? Yeah, I, I have a necessity uh, more than anything, but it was... Uh, time for a change anyway you know the uh, there was all, there was always a plan to do something practical down the line but the whole lockdown thing just brought it forward a bit well, which is mm, good you gotta keep life and soul together haven't you so yeah no yeah it's fine no, good on you but, mate That's... yeah yeah it's been good i've really enjoyed it i'm just uh i'm used to it you know i'm used to the kind of hustle culture because of having to hustle for gigs for so long Hmm. um but normally what happened is i'd you know I've, i'm used to that anxiety it's not an anxiety anymore but i'm used to that kind of feeling of being like right where's you know how's next week looking or how's you know how's next month looking or whatever with the gigs it got to the point where you know i could pretty much look at my diary and six eight months ahead would be full and it was great <laughs> so but it just reminds me of the early days when i started playing you know professionally I've just been like, right, I've got to get some gigs together for the next couple of weeks. So looking for other kind of work, it's just, it's kind of in my comfort zone. And, and I've got a van, you know, and that's always helpful as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's been fine. It's been good fun. I've really enjoyed it. And I've learned a few things about myself that I didn't know. And yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. We, mm. we used to have a bass player in uh, Maxwell Street. Well, we still have. and uh, But we always used to say he only got the gig because he had a van. Yeah. So, but then yeah, he got that a brewery, was... so, I mean, he's staying in the band now. Yeah, yeah. well, that's my experience. Right, the... I think in the current band, in the Achievers, I'm definitely the fourth best guitarist, considering there's only two guitarists in the band. <laughs> but in my first band, um, I was what the second guitarist, but I had the garage where we rehearsed. And then when another guitarist came along, I was relegated to keyboards, even though I couldn't play keyboards Hems. at all, but obviously they needed the garage. Um, so you know that is also in my comfort zone as well. My my, my skills seem to lie elsewhere, and people keep me around, so I'm, I can't complain. I've just not been very creative over this last year, um, but it hasn't stopped us as a band because um, you know Aaron Atwood, our our drummer and and producer, you know he's chronically prolific he's an incredible songwriter and his, i know his, I bought his album it's great yeah he's he's superb i mean mm. he's um he just knows how to do it and also he yeah. has the means to do it you know he has a great studio at his house um and he lives and breathes it every day so when we set about starting to put together material for this new album which i'm sure yeah. we'll talk about in a sec, um you know, most of the ideas are, uh, were his, so he's brought them to the group and then we've worked them up, whereas previous albums, it's been a mix of him and me. Mm. Um, there's a few songs in there that have started with me, but that's the great thing about it is, is that he, you know, I, I knew I could rely on him to bring ideas. Well, so I have band, isn't it? That's great. Yeah, that is. I have, so yeah. I haven't been like, oh God, what are we going to do? We've got this new album and I've got no ideas, you know? Mm. So it's been, it's been a different uh, role for me. Uh, we've had some lyric writing sessions, which have been really good, sort of fine tuning and um, sort of working out, working on lyrics that he's brought and stuff. So, you know, some, okay. a lot of the lyrics will be co-writes. So that's good. But it, it I'm at ease with it, you know. I don't feel too bad about not having written. So, where is the new album within that production process? Um, it's just being written at the yeah. moment. Um, we get together a couple of times a week at our new studio. We built a studio in the centre of town here. And, yeah, when um, can I come and see this? Um, you'd be welcome any time. When Boris actually. lets us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, um, there's only five of us, so you, you, you as a sixth hmm. would be, I think, legitimately allowed to come. We, I we, can we, wear my we, mask. How exciting. Yes, we recently made it COVID secure as well, with thanks to the subrooms in Stroud. They gave us some COVID uh, um, protective stuff. So oh, it's always a bit tricky because we're sort of half waiting for a knock at the door, you know, because you can hear the drums from the street and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and having to have that conversation with the police or with a COVID marshal and say, look, this is a place of work. We're at work, you know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we've been getting together and um, we've been working on um, on 
a different pair of songs each week. Mm. Um, and nice. we have like a system of A and B. So we, so on a Tuesday, we get together and we start an A and we think about a B. And then on the Thursday, we really work hard on the A and start to think more deeply about the B. And then the following week, the B becomes <laughs> the A and we bring a new B in. And then we just keep it churning that over. Sounds very organized. Yeah. So we've got, <laughs> we're up to about 30 idea songs at the moment. Yeah. Um, about 15 of them we've worked actively on. About eight of those 15, I'd say, were in, you know, arrangement stages. Um, but it's great fun, you know, it's, um, oh, brilliant. it's a good, it's a really good, nice way of doing it. We've really enjoyed it and it's going well. Yeah. Super. So any thoughts on timescales as far as getting the album recorded and, and out? Yeah, we think probably it'll be ready in spring or summer mm. next year. Um, we usually would have a release, you know, scheduled around a tour or a period of where we knew we were touring. <laughs> yes. Um, but we just we just freed ourselves up of that. We can't control that really. No. So we think, well, let's not worry about it too much. Um, we know we've got you know quite a few gigs next year in the diary. I'd say we're probably about seventy percent of where we would expect to be from oh, okay. rescheduled stuff from this year and other little bits that we had planned. You've got a gig scheduled, haven't you, in uh, December 18th? Yeah, 18th of December, we're doing a um, a, a, fa a, a long-avoided live stream. We've managed to avoid <laughs> doing one for the whole of the year. Um, but the subrooms, who I have done some work with promoting mm. some more... Well, I tried, I tried to get a Blues Club and a Folk Club off the ground, and yeah. we had some amazing artists coming this year. I know. And then that all got, that all got binned mm. off. Um, uh, and they've got new management and governance and uh, a new creative director who's really okay. um, uh, who's really creative, as you'd hope, and, and, and really inspired. Um, and like me, she's been watching the you know, the trend for live streams and stuff and has been noticing where people can learn lessons and develop and, and make them really, you know, get the best out of them. And, yeah. and she's invited us to come and do one. And we're very lucky here that D and B audio have their, as you'll know, their um, British base in the town next to yeah, us. Indeed. So they're providing sound and they're the best nice. live sound people in the world, apparently. And then um, a professional who does BBC's outside broadcasting in the Midlands and the Southwest is doing their filming. So that is always our caveat with live streams is one, we couldn't get together to do one because there's five mm. of us and that would have been deeply immoral and illegal to have got together. Um, and like a, a, uh, one band I can think of who pretended that uh, they were locked down in isolation the whole oh, time. Oh, yes, when I they saw basically that. Basically, yeah. <laughs> good one. I, was, I wasn't backwards and coming forwards about my yeah. distaste. I, I, I noticed, was, yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was crass and... Uh, mm cheap um uh, but there we are um i'll probably bump into him at some point anyway yeah that'd be nice look forward to that um uh, so yeah we, we didn't want to do one unless also the sound and the visuals were really good as well and yeah, i know for a lot awesome. of people who have done them it's because of the income stream mm. there's been a few actually that i've really really enjoyed um i i, I tuned into i tuned into ian siegel's one every sunday when that's on and it's not because yeah. i'm his agent but i mean it is but you know what i'm saying um <laughs> um it, also, um, Niall Kelly did a really good one every Friday night, which was really good. Okay. So I tuned into that one. And those, these are ones from just from home. Hmm. Um, and I get, you know, I get people need to do them. But for us, we just didn't, we didn't really want to do one um, hmm. unless it was going to be possible for people to have a shared experience and to Oof. be able to stick with it for 45 minutes. So, so that's, yeah, 18th of December, it'll be streamed on Vimeo um, and then it will be saved as a HD video online after that so people can catch up if they haven't seen brilliant. it brilliant yeah it'll be good mm, excellent mm. is that a ticketed thing um no it's not it's free to access with donations i think like a lot of them oh, okay um so um so we will we will be remunerated for it and we will share the income with the subrooms yeah. who have obviously put the production in place which is good for us oh, brilliant um, so people can just tune in, I think, and then mm. they can, ch you know, chuck a few quid in if they would like to, which would be, would, which would be a welcome, yeah. you know. So look out on Facebook for, for uh, information. Yeah, it's mostly what I'll talk about now between now and the <laughs> middle of December. Um, and, you know, we'll tease out a few sort of little bits and ends just to give you an insight of what it's going to look like. Mm. It's going to be, it's going to be done within 
um, an immersive light exhibition, which is done by a local. Um, Sounds great. Yeah, light, a light artist called Jack Wimpress. He's he, you know, he he was due to have um, uh, a piece of work on top of the pyramid stage at Glastonbury this year, um, and he tours all around, you know, the world doing these yeah. incredible immersive wow. light installations. And so his it's um, it's kind of a, a walk through light. It, it's crazy um we're, we're performing right in the middle of that basically so it's a bit trippy and interesting and immersive and it's it's really really cool i helped build it actually i helped paint right. a lot of black sheets <laughs> that was work. awesome yeah it's yeah. really cool so it's an interesting environment in yeah. great sound really good cameras and hopefully a great performance from us of lots of new material too which i'm hoping people will like yeah mm. so you mentioned stroud blues club earlier obviously that yeah. was going to start again have you got yeah. any thoughts on that or are you just holding off until I'm holding happens? off I'm holding off at the moment yeah we um we did um you know I did have a whole you know season of really great bookings to come in because mm. you know I've, I've got good connections with most of the agents you know who, yeah. who book international people and you know we were able to do sort of midweek evening gigs which is good for touring acts obviously um yeah so we um we were hoping that we'd, you know, have a monthly gig going on um, with some really good touring acts. And uh, unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Mm. But we'll see if we can get it back off the ground again um, next year, as and when things are right. If that's at the, if it's at the subs, that'd be great. If not, there are other options. Um, but um, it depends where I'm at, really, in my own life. Because if I'm if I'm busy with the band and I'm also having some um, work in other fields as well then promoting music might be a bit of a stretch for me yeah of course i do enjoy doing it and mm. i've done it a lot over my life so it'd be nice to get back back into it brilliant uh, it would be nice to see it i guess we just got to see what happens with um, yeah stuff yeah sure mm. we'll get i'll see you in the queue for the vaccinations yeah right <laughs> yeah yeah, well, Whatever that's, that may be. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I don't know. I think we're probably quite far down the pecking order generally. But one one thing I was concerned about was that um, touring in Europe might be depending on having a sort of vaccinated, you know, being God, yeah. officially being vaccinated. But um, if that's the case, then I'm not in line to, and the best of the band aren't in line to get it as a sort of a compulsory schedule, then we might have to get it done privately, which would be kind of probably quite mm. expensive. But um, well. But I think that'll be possible because I was very, very, very back in my days when I was a social worker, very, very peripherally, very peripherally involved. I basically sat next to someone who um, pushed through the meningitis B vaccine. Okay. And um, that took years to get through. And then when it yeah. came through for children, you could just go to Boots and get it privately. So I don't imagine that the pharmaceutical companies will miss that opportunity. So I'd imagine that if you really need it to pr proceed with your day to day business. Yeah then you can go and get it privately. That's what I'm assuming. You're probably right. I think the only other mountain would probably be the paperwork to take your, all your kit into Europe and get round. And, uh, well, that's... It will be a bit of a mission, but admin is a strength of mine. Okay. <laughs> so, so we'll see. <laughs> well, I mean, I've read some, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I don't have a choice, really. Um, I've seen some, you know, stuff. There was a, um, a composer, you probably saw it, I can't remember his name, um, he put a big thread on Twitter about what touring musicians in Europe will have to do in order to tour okay. there. Right. And it was kind of a worst case scenario thing, I think. Um, but it seemed pretty well researched and realistic. So there's a, there's hmm. a good chance that uh, it will be more or less impossible to tour in Europe um, unless you have quite a bit of backing. But that said... I don't know how difficult it will be for small bands like us who don't have huge touring entourages and crews and lot, large vehicles and large amounts of equipment and stuff. It might be a little bit easier for us to do that hmm. than it would be for, say, you know, a mid-level band who are playing, you know, arenas or whatever. Not mid-level, but, you know, not Rolling Stones, but, you know. Of course, yeah, yeah. It's sort of mid. So yeah. we'll just, we'll have to wait and see. But I'm keeping a close eye on it because if I find out that we have to be applying for stuff, then I'll do it now and then it's ready for next year. Um, it's too late to become a Dutch citizen, unfortunately. So, yeah. <laughs> As you know, right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, mate. Well, look, it's good to catch up. Thanks for your time. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure. Um, really nice to see you again. And because uh, we haven't bumped into each other on the street. 
probably not that we'd recognize each other because we don't both have masks on and um, it's, it's yeah, quite that's, difficult yeah. to... <laughs> i've done that a few times walking around the supermarket yeah. being like giving someone the eye like this is that so do i recognize that person's forehead <laughs> yeah right and i quite like going into the bank with a mask on that's that's quite it's, fun yeah it's yeah. refreshing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> good okay yeah. um steve good to um, see you Stu. yeah and you um let me have any details on the subrooms in december you bet because a i'd like to see it and um i will put it out on the show um as and when um great before. so lovely nice brilliant. to see you Stu. and you mate you take care thank you Cheerio. bye, bye, -bye. Now, I came across our next guest on the internet, or Tinternet, as they pronounce it up north. Um, he's produced a couple of songs for us, actually, um, a couple of Sam Cook songs. Just great, a real treat. Um, his name is Martin McNeil, and he's from Leon C in Essex. Well, somebody's got to come from Essex. Anyway, enjoy this. A couple of Sam Cooke tunes for you. Come on, let the good times roam We're gonna stay here till we soothe our soul If it takes all night long Come on, let the good times roam We're gonna stay here till we soothe our soul If it takes all night long The evening sun is sinking low The clock on the wall says it's time to go I got my plans, I don't know about you I'll tell you just what I'm gonna do Get in the groove and let the good times roll We're gonna stay here till we soothe our soul If it takes all night long to me I haven't felt this good since I don't know when and I don't know when I'll feel this good again everybody let the good times roll we're gonna stay here till we soothe our soul if it takes all night long It takes all night long. Well, all 
instrumental version of um, Sam Cooke's great um, civil rights anthem A Change Is Gonna Come Bear with me Yeah, Change Is Gonna Come It'd be a bit, um, a bit audacious of me to try and sing this
Thank you, Martin. I can see we're going to have to hear more of Martin in the future. And so to Mr. Andy Collis, um, we're going to do uh, we're going to listen to one of his songs now. And uh, this is Change of Heart. All right. Uh, OK, I'll do one of my own. now. Um, I'm trying to do one that's a little bit recent. I don't have an album out to promote and I <laughs> don't know whether I ever will do. So uh, this is a bit of a unique, you know, it's a world first world premiere. <laughs> And it'll disappear into oblivion. But anyway, I don't care. He, uh, you still keep writing, don't you? Um, and this one, uh, I wrote it really uh, when I was so happy to see my daughter feeling happy in a relationship uh, that's going beautifully for her. And I, hopefully it will go the distance. And, um, and we sometimes sort of look back on some of the mistakes and situations that we were in. And uh, for whatever reason, something happens and... Uh, you have a change of heart and it works out for the better. So this one's called uh, Change of Heart, of course. You are my change of heart I am now a world apart From where I used to be You did this to me You are my change of heart Into the light out of the the future's clear to see The past is history What seemed so white was really black I was headed down a wrong way track You turned me round And looking back There are no roads behind me You are my change of heart You and I will So, do you wake up with a song in your head sometimes that just won't go away? It just goes round and round. Which is great when you're writing songs, that's fine. Uh, but obviously other songs pop up as well. That's uh, the one that you're about to hear. Um, so I decided to uh, to cover it. So I was sort of I was just getting better as I re-listened to it and re-listened to it. Um, it might be thought of being a, as being a bit karaoke, I suppose, but... Um, I think it's only that because it's actually a really good song um, and it was a massive hit for a great fun band um, from the 70s and that'll be Dr Hook so here's a version of more like the movies <laughs> The dance is over now You just curtsy And I'll bow I'll ask the band to play Old Lang Syne I 
I'll just take what's left of me Right back where it used to be And you go ride your magic carpet Right across the sky Oh, I wish I could have made it More like a movie's for you Some pretty technicolor A way that's never been I'm sorry when I kissed you You only heard me whisper Got to hear those violins Did you go? No, you never got to hear those violins The castles that you built so high Were just too steep for me to climb Guess those dirty streets of mine were just too rough for you. I wish I could have helped you see just one of your sweet childhood dreams. Though I tried, could not make not one of them come true. Oh, I wish I. Pretty technical way it's never been. I'm sorry when I kissed you. You only heard me whisper. You never got to hear those violins, did you? No, you never got to hear those violins. That I kissed you You only heard me whisper You never got to hear those violins Did you, girl? No, you never got to hear those violins No, you never got to hear those violins Well, there we are, folks. That's another show done. Um, thanks for watching. And um, hopefully I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. I'll maybe do a quickie next week, see what we can sort out. Um, in the meantime, stay well, stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.